Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are notes on how the skin repairs and heals. Um, so we're going to be talking about healings of wounds, like cuts and burns. Um, and so first we need to back up and we need to talk about what happens when the skin is damaged. So anytime the body is damaged, inflammation is a normal response to any injury or even just stress. So inflammation is how the body attempts to restrict the, the spread of infection uh, and also to heal. So when something is inflamed, the blood, vessel, the blood vessels in that area dilate uh, and they become more permeable and that lets um, fluids leak uh, into those damaged tissues. It also goes ahead and supplies them with a larger supply of, um, of white blood cells. So white blood cells are going to rush to that area. So uh, when you have inflamed skin, it can be red, it can be swollen, uh, it can feel warm to the touch, and it's probably going to be painful because it's swollen, right? Uh, and so it's going to be puffy. And, um, and there's typically some nerve damage there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at um, some specifics. So for cuts, if you have a shallow cut, which is, um, which is only affecting the epidermis, the result that's gonna happen is just the epidermal cells along the margin, along the edges of the cut, will start dividing more rapidly than usual and they'll just fill in the gap. So um, that's not just along the sides of the cut, it's along like the, the bottom, all of the edges of where the cut was, that's gonna go ahead and those cells that are along the, the wound are gonna go ahead and undergo faster mitosis and fill in that spot and you'll go ahead and have new skin there. If you have a deeper cut, which actually reaches the dermis or the subcutaneous layer, it's going to result in blood vessels breaking um, and you're going to have, uh, you're going to bleed obviously until the released blood forms a clot. And so a clot is made of a combination of fibrin, which is a protein, blood cells and platelets, and it kind of um, dries together and it forms a scab, right? And so as epithelial cells reproduce, as those cells reproduce, they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna fill in the void where that wound is and eventually start to kind of push that scab off the same way that old, old skin cells are pushed off by new skin cells. So one of the things that's happening in that wound is that you're gonna get fibroblasts, which are a, are a, special, a specialized type of cell, and they're gonna secrete collagen fibers, um, and that's gonna go ahead and kind of stitch the wound back together from the inside. Uh, and then you're gonna get growth factors that stimulate uh, new tissue formation, so that's gonna increase the rate of mitosis in the wound. And then you have phagocytic cells, which are a type of, of white blood cell, and they're gonna go in and they're gonna remove dead cells and debris, and then eventually that scab just sloughs off. Um, but sometimes you can have excess collagen fibers and that can lead to a, a tough area on the skin or maybe even an elevated mass and that's going to be what, what makes a scar. So that's a cut and I think you've probably all experienced probably both types of those cuts before. Um, so you kind of know how the healing process looks from a, from a layman's perspective, but this is just what's happening. So let's look at the picture. So you have a wound, right? And this wound goes all the way down into the dermis. Uh, and so you can see white blood cells responding to that wound. Um, and so that's gonna be the immediate response. And then what's gonna happen next is you're gonna get the recruitment of macrophages, which are gonna help go ahead and protect the body from any pathogens that are present and also go ahead and start getting rid of some of the debris. And then this is a fibroblast and that's gonna go ahead and start um, making those fibers that are gonna, kinda gonna knit this back together. And you see that this is all after the blood clot has formed, right? So you've got your scab there. And so it basically works its way up. And you can see here, we've worked our way mostly up uh, and then you're gonna get this granulation tissue, which is just a, a, a different uh, tissue than, than you had to begin with. Um, you can see that it, it's not normally this deep. So that's your regenerated epidermis. You have some scarring deep inside the dermis. Uh, and so sometimes you can feel like the tissues just kind of has like a different texture. And then over time, you'll get some remodeling where the cells will go and kind of clean that up. And so a scar might fade, it might get less over time. So on a, on a burn, a burn is a little different. So burns are classified by the extent of tissue damage. So you can have a superficial wound, um, 
which is a, like a partial thickness. It's a first degree burn. Um, most of you have had a first degree burn before probably. So that's only gonna injure your epidermis. So a sunburn, just redness, heat or inflammation. Um, so healing is gonna take days to weeks. There's no, no scarring involved with a, with, a, with a first degree burn. Just for the record, you can actually get a second degree burn from a sunburn. I don't want you guys to think that if you got a sunburn and it was really bad and it blistered, that that's just a first degree burn. It's not. Let's move on and let's look at second degree burn. So a deep or partial thickness burn would, would be considered a second degree burn. And so a second degree, degree burn destroys the epidermis and actually destroys some of the dermis. Um, so this is most typically going to happen if you um, get a burn from like hot liquid or um, uh, Another one that is a is a is a good way to get a second degree burn is when you reach into the oven and you hit your hand on the top of the the top element of the oven and then you get that burn on the top of your hand. Um, so that's a that's a pretty decent way to get a second degree burn. You can actually get a third degree burn that way also, but normally it's just a second degree. So that's going to destroy that that epidermis and some dermis. Those may blister. Um, it's going to depend on how bad the second degree burn is. And also the healing is going to vary depending on that severity and whether or not um, the stem cells survive in there. So stem cells uh, are found in the hair follicles and the glands, and they can actually help regenerate the skin. So if you didn't destroy the glands, um, the the hair follicles, or the, if you didn't destroy the accessory organs in the dermis, then typically you're going to get recovery. Um, and and regenerate that skin and it usually recovers uh, completely and normally no scarring um but those of you that have you know gotten those blisters before know sometimes they will scar uh and then a full thickness third degree burn destroys the epidermis the dermis and the accessory structure and those are the result of prolonged exposure to heat directly to flames or to hot liquids. Um, and so those heal slowly from the margins. Again, so the same way that the cuts do, they, they heal from the, the edges in, um, but they heal very slowly. And so a third degree burn often requires a skin graft or some skin substitutes. And I'm not gonna mention any specifically here because they change so rapidly um, with modern medicine that any that I, I give you would probably be out of date by the time the next class watches this video. So there's that. So um, for burns, we have what we call the rule of nines for burn patients. And so when we, um, when you treat a burn patient, you have to, the first thing you do is you, you estimate the percentage of their body, the surface of their body that has been burned and to what extent it's been burned. And they do that by dividing the body up into regions of 9% or multiples of nine. Um, and so this is kind of the, the diagram that they use. Uh, and then they use that information to go ahead and plan um, on, on the recovery of the patient. So they use that to go ahead and calculate how many replacement fluids and electrolytes, um, and then the actual skin grafts and stuff. But you, you, you have to know like what percentage of the patient has been burned for that. Um, so now we're gonna move completely out of talking about cuts and burns, and we're gonna talk about skin healing and repair a completely different sub subject, which is lifespan changes. So as you get older, your skin actually does not respond the same way anymore. And so returning to its normal state becomes more and more difficult and then it eventually becomes impossible. It cannot repair itself to its normal homeostatic state and that state changes as you get older. So as you get older, the cell cycle slows down and skin actually starts to become scaly and you may get age spots, which are like brown spots on the skin. Um, if you're actually ever face to face with me, I have one right here on my face. Um, but you can't really see it on camera too much. So epidermis and dermis become thinner. Um, so your skin just becomes thinner. Uh, you That happens. And then also the skin sags some because you lose the fat in the subcutaneous layer. Um, and so people start to feel cold faster, but also because you've lost that fat in the subcutaneous layer and the skin is thinner and it's not producing uh, proteins as quickly, it starts wrinkling and sagging as the skin, skin can occur. Uh, as you age, your sebaceous glands secrete less oil and so the skin becomes dry. Um, 
which sounds like it's good news because, oh, well, then I'll never get acne, but it leads to some other problems with the skin and cracking. Melanin production decreases in the skin um, and in the hair follicles, so you get whiter, you get white and gray hair. Uh, hair actually thins. The hairs become thinner for some people, although some people actually develop coarser hair, but then fewer hair follicles. So the number of hair follicles decreases. So the amount of hair thins, but the the diameter of each hair shaft increases. It just kind of depends on you and your genetics. Nail growth slows down again because you're having less mitotic division um, at the in those epidermal cells, uh, and then you get you get a, de a decline in your sensory receptors. So you actually start to lose. Um, as much receptor feeling uh, in, in your hands and in your extremities and in your skin. Uh, and that means that your body temperature regulation actually just becomes less effective because those receptors in your skin are what's triggering your response to, uh, to your thermoregulation, triggering that hypothalamus to go ahead and, and, and make a decision. And if your receptors are, are less um, sensitive, then you're going to go ahead and just be less effective at at maintaining homeostasis. And also you've lost that subcutaneous adipose layer. Uh, and then uh, just to top it all off, you have a diminished ability to produce vitamin D because remember that that uh, UV light hitting the skin allows your body to convert cholesterol into vitamin D. So a lot of older people also suffer from a vitamin D deficiency. Actually, most people suffer from a vitamin D deficiency, but as you get older, it increases. So that's it. Those are the ends of the notes on wounds and healing. Those are the ends of the notes on the integumentary system. If you have any questions, go ahead and contact me for tutoring.